appreciate the introduction, appreciate the opportunity to be here in front of everyone today. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Ohio's experience with uh, enhancing manure, or as you can see, I wrote, I wrote prescription manure, because we do have the ability to dial in some of the uh, contents of livestock manure if we choose to do so. So what we've done here in the state of Ohio, for those of you that know me from past years, uh, we've worked pretty hard to develop systems where we can take manure directly from the manure storage facility, uh, pump it through a long hose of some sort like we have here, a drag, a drag hose or some call it an umbilical cord, and we're directly injecting manure into a growing corn crop. And to do that, uh, we like to inject it at a rate that we can uh, fulfill the nitrogen needs of the corn crop without overdoing the phosphorus needs of the crop. So we started top dressing wheat many years ago. We've moved on to manure. And again, our goal was try to capture nutrients better than we've ever captured them before. Oops, let's go two, there we go. These uh, are two what we call double wide swine finishing buildings in the state of Ohio. They're the most common commercial fertilizer or commercial manure source that we have in the state. Each of these buildings will hold pretty close to 2,500 pigs. So the combined buildings will hold just short of 5,000 uh, finishing pigs. And usually brought in at about 12 pounds and exiting around 280 to 290 pounds. These two buildings will also hold about 1.6 million gallons of manure combined. And um, traditionally, this would be manure that was typically fall applied after corn and soybean harvest. And uh, we try to work on picking uh, better uh, application windows than, than that. This is kind of a typical analysis. You can send manure samples in for analysis, just like you do soil samples. And this is just a swine finishing building um, analysis. I just want to show you a few key numbers. The first one that I have the red arrow pointing to, that's the total nitrogen that came back. And this is pounds of nitrogen and 1,000 gallons of manure. So in this, in this uh, example, we're having just a little short of uh, 38 pounds of total nitrogen. And of that total nitrogen, about 36 pounds is in the ammonium form, readily available for crop uptake or eventually could be converted over to uh, another form by soil bacteria. But it's ready to go if it can be put in contact with a crop that wants to utilize it. There's always some organic nitrogen in manure, much more in um, beef and dairy manure than there is in uh, swine manure due to the feeding systems and the, and the, and the nutrient uh, absorption in the body. But the other things we look at are the P2O5, and here we have 12.36 pounds of P2O5 in 1,000 gallons, and we have our K2O number in 1,000 gallons. Now, when we talk to livestock farmers in the state of Ohio, and we look at these nutrients and we talk about utilizing them, it's always important for them to realize that about 40% of the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash value in that liquid manure is in that ammonium nitrogen. So if we cannot use it on crops or choose not to use it on crops, then we're going to replace that with purchased fertilizer. So it's a way of uh, giving some, uh, you know, a different way to think about using that. We usually try to apply manure with a two-year crop rotation in mind uh, because I'm going to, um, when I use my manure as a side dress for corn, uh, I'm often going to look at attempting to put on twice as much nitrogen as I do phosphorus. And I look for what I call a two to one ratio in nitrogen to P2O5 for a two year corn soybean rotation. We're much more into a corn soybean rotation in Ohio than in states further west of us. But in this example, I have 12.36 pounds of P2O5 in a thousand gallons, and I have almost 36 pounds of ammonium nitrogen plus a small portion of the organic would become available. So I have in this example about a three to one ratio of um, nitrogen to phosphorus. So if in a corn soybean rotation, if I wanted to apply 200 pounds of nitrogen to the corn as a side dress, then I would be applying you know, about 100 pounds of uh, phosphorus with my two to one ratio. And basically, over a two-year corn soybean rotation, we estimate that most fields will remove somewhere around 100 pounds to 120 pounds of P2O5 per acre. But this is the three-to-one ratio. This would be even better than our two-to-one. Here's an example of a dairy farm. 
If you look at um, the nitrogen, the available nitrogen in that dairy manure, and you look at the P2O5 number, you'll see these are closer to a one-to-one, -one, not, not nearly as much as a two-to-one that I seek for. And so this would be an example of um, manure that we could enhance possibly by adding nitrogen to get me up more to the two-to-one ratio that I want to go for. The way manures are stored has a lot to do with their nutrient content. This is a pit of one of those two swine buildings that we looked at already. Um, dairy manure for the most part in our state stored in outdoor lagoons where you've got the addition of rainfall, you've got the addition of wind and wave action on these ponds to release uh, ammonium nitrogen. So essentially the storage has a lot to do in addition to the rations and how it's stored, um, the affects the value of our, our manures. We started a few years ago, I guess this is more than 10 now that I think about it, with some nursery manure. We wanted to see if we could enhance the value of that. So here's a picture from the early 2000s of uh, us adding 28% UAN, that's a ure uh, urea ammonium nitrate. And we're adding that to five gallon containers so that we can dump these in a tanker of manure. And 28% UAN has about three pounds per gallon of product. Now for many of you further south, that'd be the same as your 32% UAN but again, we have to dilute it so it doesn't freeze up here when it gets cold in the winter months. Here's just a picture of us dumping in a few containers into this um, tanker right before we filled it. And this was back when um, um, top loaders were relatively a new thing in our state. And so we didn't have a top loader. So we're actually sticking a manure hose into a tanker of, uh, and then filling it up. So it took kind of an, a team effort to do it. The other thing to remember is in the state of Ohio, we're limited uh, on our manure application rates to um, the water holding capacity of the soil or 13,500 gallons per acre, whichever is lower. So 13,500 gallons per acre is commonly the maximum we apply with our dairy manure in a single pass. Um, some of our fields might be as low as 8,000 gallons per acre for an application rate. And we basically went to the field, we did our manure application, pretty satisfied with the results that we got out of that. But I did pull some analysis samples and, and I want to look at those. At the top, we talk about this uh, swine nursery manure applied at 6,000 gallons per acre. Uh, we added 30 gallons of 28% UAN to the manure tanker. And our side dress nitrogen goal for this farmer was 150 pounds per acre. So the available nitrogen in the first row he had 9.9 .9 pounds in the manure samples that we had pulled. And then when you look at the 30 gallons of 28% we added to his manure tanker, uh, then that got us up there almost to 25 pounds of manure per thousand or of nitrogen per 1,000 gallons. The P2O5 essentially did not change in the grab samples that we collected. The K2O did not change significantly in the grab samples that we collected. Uh, but if you look at the bottom, row, pounds of nitrogen applied at that 6,000 gallon per acre rate, we went from 59.4 pounds per, per, or excuse me, pounds per acre to 149.4. So we basically hit our 150 uh, pounds of nitrogen per acre that the farmer wanted to hit. Now why, why did we pick 6,000 gallons at the application rate when we could have gone higher? Well, it goes back to the size of your manure tank and your ability to get down to the other end of the field and back. In this field, when we're looking at a distance like we were, uh, down and back, uh, doing six rows at a time, makes about eight-tenths of an uh, acre. So when I apply that 5,000 gallons that was in that manure tanker to the eight-tenths of an acre that I covered in my down and back trip, I arrive at my 6,000 gallon per acre application rate. We have about 260,000 dairy cows in the state of Ohio. We work pretty hard with that to uh, um, maximize use of nutrients such as that. Again, we have the outdoor storage, uh, opportunities to lose a lot of nutrients. You can tell by the bedding here, or this is the uh, surface uh, crust that we have some sawdust involved in the bedding, not necessarily a sand situation in this one. But we basically did some plots with farmers doing the same thing where we, uh, rather than lug 
these uh, five gallon buckets of manure up to the top and dumping them in our tanker. Uh, in this instance, we basically timed how long it would take to uh, fill the right number of five gallon buckets that we would need to add the nitrogen to the manure. So in that instance, um, we got to the point where we would pull the tanker in, we would turn on the top loader on the left hand side to begin filling. Took about five or six minutes to fill this tanker, I believe, with the dairy manure. Took less than two minutes to put the 28 that we needed in. So again, we figured 28% UAN at three pounds in a gallon. And if you wanted to do this maybe a little more sensibly, you probably could just put that uh, 28 tank on the opposite side of that uh, tanker and ratchet strap that 28 applicator hose right to the uh, uh, top loader itself to be a little more safe maybe than what we were that day. When we do our application back then, we um, basically uh, did a lot of work for several years there where we would take the flotation tires off a manure tanker. We put these payloader tires on and we injected uh, manure as a comparison to commercial fertilizer in our plots. And when we did this with our dairy manure, uh, we would pull grab samples uh, as we went along. And essentially, um, you know, it worked out pretty well for us. It, it raised the nitrogen like we thought it would. This is kind of what we like to see when we are in a field and oftentimes we'll leave strips of uh, commercial fertilizer as comparisons and side by side. But if you can get good coverage of your product like this, then you're gonna, gonna be much happier with the nitrogen amounts that you're able to save and the crop will utilize. Here was uh, some grab samples we did of our dairy manure back then. And again, the, the application rate is at 6,000 gallons per acre to get down and back. And in this instance, the farmer wanted 180 units of nitrogen or 180 pounds of nitrogen per acre. So to do that, we ended up adding 34 gallons of 28% to the 5,250 gallon tanker. And if you'll see on the available nitrogen on the top uh, row, we had 12.9 in that dairy manure. And if you look at what the application was when we pulled some samples, they came in at 29.9. So right at about 30 pounds in a thousand gallons. The P205 was essentially unchanged and the K20 was essentially unchanged, which we would not expect that to uh, change anyhow. But at the bottom, uh, pounds of nitrogen applied with our 6,000 gallon per acre rate, we went from uh, 77 to 179. So that got us very, very close to the uh, 180 that the farmer wanted to have in, his, in the application. And we felt pretty good about that. I think it uh, did what we wanted to do. They need to understand that the, the density of the two liquids is different. Um, manure is gonna be much closer to water at maybe 8.4 pounds per gallon and 28% UAN is more dense. It's about 2.0 or 10.2 pounds uh, per gallon. So you need to understand that if these had been left to sit without any turbulence inside the applicator, I would expect them to separate and we would pump most of the 28 out first since the applicator that we used pumped from the bottom of the manure tanker. And then secondly, had these been allowed to sit overnight, Perhaps there would have been some sort of uh, bonding of some of that nitrogen with uh, organic material and stuff. So in our instance, we added that right before or right, you know, right as we went to the field. So that seemed to alleviate those types of issues. I just throw this one in here only because this is an example of dairy manure that came off of a sand bedded system uh, without the... Um, sawdust, we have less organic matter in it, and this is kind of a dry sample from our standpoint, about 90% water versus about 97% most of the time for our outside manure storages. But you can see our total nitrogen, you can see our ammonium nitrogen, quite a bit higher than the other sample. Uh, a lot of organic because it is dairy, but there's my P2O5 and my K2O. So in this instance, I have eight pound, 8.1 pounds of P2O5, and I have 17.24 pounds of ammonium nitrogen. So that's pretty much that two to one ratio I'm at. So if I can get that applied with, uh, with an application rate that meets our state rules, then again, we can get the um, 
uh, corn side dressed and provide the P2O5 needed for next year's soybean crop as well. So we're really emphasizing trying to balance those things as we go forward in the future with manure application in the state. And really it brings us down to the question, where could we introduce nitrogen into the manure application process to meet our side dress needs? In this instance, we have a semi that's pulled up to a top loader. Uh, this commercial applicator is gonna haul this to a distant um, field, and then he'll either have a um, applicator on the back that'll shoot that out on top of the uh, crop, or he'll uh, transfer that into a, um, a fracture tank, we call them, or a frac tank, which is a, a, a tank that's out away from the manure source that we can transfer manure to. It's a temporary tank, and I have a picture here. So you could load it here, or put the 28 at this point. If you did it, this video is just simply a semi-load of manure pulling into a fracture tank out on a rural road. And uh, in this day, they were hauling manure about eight miles from the dairy. And um, this commercial applicator has a nice enough system. He can unload two frac tanks, or excuse me, two semi-tanks at the same time. The manure is dumped into this 27,000 gallon frac tank, which has a drag hose hooked to it. And so again, we could introduce the 28% uh, into that uh, beige colored frac tank as a place to go at that time. If we're pumping 2,000 gallons a minute out of that tank and applying that to the field, we could calculate how much 28% we'd want to add in that situation. This is just another picture of a frac tank. Again, a semi pulling up in a rural road, dumping it out. Uh, through a gravity-fed system, perhaps we would introduce the 28 at this point and uh, have it, the turbulence would keep that mixed, and really that's what we'd like to have in these situations. I would admit the vast majority of our dairy manure, our low nutrient manure in the state, is usually handled by a pump directly from the uh, manure source. Uh, this has got a, uh, looks like a 10 inch to a 12 inch feeder line. You can see by the hydraulic hoses that are laying across this, that there's some sort of a pump in the pit or in the lagoon that's pushing the manure up to the, the main pump and then out to the field it goes. And this is co this piece of equipment is probably capable of 3,000 gallons or more per, per minute, uh, depending on how large the hoses are going out the other side. I thought also if we wanted to do something in this situation, we could grab a tank similar to this one, locate that next to the dairy pond itself. We could pump the 28, or the, excuse me, pump manure into this thing, force it out into that main pump that we showed in the previous picture, and then we could add 28 in this at the same time if we thought that'd be the way to do it. Regardless, our goal was to efficiently use manure nutrients as best we can. And if we can apply them to a growing crop, not have to buy as much commercial fertilizer as uh, we did before, that's really our, our, our um, ultimate goal. And that's to, to maximize the use of livestock manure and, and apply manure as efficiently as possible. That's always an important thing. We can't be adding costs if we're not adding value to manure. <laughs>